What's up, guys? I'm Forrest, one of your hosts from Toddy Rap, or that one time I reincarnated as a podcaster. Today, I'm going to be doing a different segment. Normally, we just do podcasts. I've been doing unboxings every so often. I've been lazy on those recently, but uh, today, I'm going to do more of a review thing. There's a show that I I watch that the other guys I'm pretty sure I won't watch that I'd like to talk about, and I think... A longer form thing would be kind of boring so I'm gonna try this I'm gonna call it probably bullet point reviews I'm not sure yet but basically what my plan is when I re uh, watch stuff if I want to talk about it or if there's important things I'll do bullet points on my phone so I'm just kind of gonna read off the bullet point or just use that as like a uh, easy jumping off point or jumping on point and uh, today we're going to review basically Beastars 2, Season 2. Uh, I'll talk about Beastars Season 1 in this, but I know it's a show they aren't going to watch. You know, they think it's too furry, like, I don't care. It's a great show. Or, I mean, you know, I'll tell you later what I think of it. But, uh, but yeah, so I'll give you a lay down of what I think of the show, uh, what is good about it. I'll probably talk about bad things within it. There'll be shows that I'll probably review later on that are going to be worse, better. But, you know, since I knew no one was going to talk about this and I didn't want to really just talk about it and spoil it on the podcast, I'm just going to spoil it completely here. And uh, might as well just get started. Oh, and I'll give it a rating at the end like I do with everything. It'll be out of 10, the usual. But uh, might as well start. So, uh, big thing about this show is... I didn't watch it when it first came out, but I knew the opening was just fire. The song's pretty good. You know, I give it like a seven, but the animation is claymation. So I give it like a, it's like a goddamn 10. So I saw that. I'm like, it's on Netflix. I'll watch it. If it's on Netflix, I normally watch it dubbed. Just going to give you a heads up there. Uh, I did watch one episode uh, in subtitles so I can listen to both voice actors and then I can judge. But anyway, so we'll go back to the openings and endings. So the first one is just a hot fucking banger. And I don't remember the ending. It doesn't look like I've written anything down about it. But I know the first one has that cool jazz, a little rap to it. Huge fan of it. I do listen to it on and off. But uh, season two, to me, is probably the best. I'm pretty sure, yeah, both the opening and the ending is Yasa Boy. <laughs> That's what I say, Yasobi. Uh, she's become one of my favorite artists, and the opening and ending to B Stars is just so good. It, it's one of those songs I just kind of listen on repeat constantly, and it's funny because she just recently released, I think it's called Monster, which I'm pretty sure is the opening, but she released it again instead of having it on in kanji or whatever it is, Hiragana. It's now in English, so you can look it up on Spotify. It's a must listen to. And the opening and ending on season two, the animation's pretty good. I don't fully remember it. It's not very memorable like season one was with the claymation. But, you know, even if you don't watch the show, I don't know why you're listening to this. But listen to the songs. At least look up the openings. They're fire. Anyway, so my next bullet point I have is that the English dub is actually amazing. I know... You dub, sub, you get the battle. I don't have time to watch everything in sub like I used to. I do watch a shit ton of anime. So when I'm trying to catch up on stuff, or if it's on Netflix, I'll normally watch it dubbed. And there is some garbage shows. Like, uh... Takagi-san is not great. Scissor 7 is not great at all. But this show, the English voice actors are really good. I think it's Legacy. And do I have him on here? The deer. I'll remember him in a couple minutes. Their voice actors are amazing. The females are pretty good, but I think they're your usual cast. But the male actors, for some reason, it's not very basic. It's not too deep. It's actually really good voicing. They have the right yelling when it needs to be in the fighting. It's just not like over anime looking. Because, you know, a lot of the English dubs, they try to go like, Oh, I should match the voice and then go like super high pitch or way too deep or don't sound like it. But this time I think they nailed it. 
I give the dub like a 9 out of 10. And the subs, it's a sub. It's always good. There, there's no issues with it. If you want to watch it in sub, that's probably the better recommendation. But if you're like me and don't have time, I give the dub a listen to. Or at least if you listen to sub normally, give at least one episode a shout. You know, shout out to the English voice actors. They're amazing in this one. So... So one thing you don't know, well, one thing you probably know about me, I'm pretty critical on animation because I do like to draw. I like art. I'm not going to say my art's good, not even close, <laughs> but I do look at it a lot. You know, he said, how much anime do we watch a season? Okay, so something you might know about me, maybe not, I'm not sure, is I'm a huge critic on animation. I do like to draw, I like to, I just like cartoonish looking things, obviously. And I won't say my art's great, but I do critique a lot of it when I watch it. And CG is a really big thing that I hate. I understand it saves money, I understand you can make it look good, like, uh, I'm pretty sure Ufu Table does really good uh cg could be them could be wrong i don't know no matter uh but this show is actually really well done i'm not sure if it's the cg that's amazing or if it's or if it's because they're not humans they're humanoids obviously it's <laughs> they're all animals furries whatever you want to say i don't care but this show since they don't have that like human look i don't think it looks awkward and the movements are actually very clean because normally when you get CG, it looks like they're a robot. But I guess this show, since they're all like lengthy animals or they're short and squat, it works out really well for the show. It's it's just a really good. Uh, oh, if you really if you don't like CG but you want to kind of watch this show, or if you have a lot of time, I'd actually say read the manga. I haven't read it myself, but I have looked at a lot of panels from it. The art on there is amazing. It's beautifully you know, black and white, obviously. But the the time and dedication he put into it and the shading is really good. But I'd say at least look it up if you've already seen the show, too. But you probably know that. I'm just talking. <laughs> but that's my uh, CG critic thing. So the show has a weird thing so it's a school <laughs> where the main character is technically is part of the drama club but the whole school is carnivores and herbivores and you know there's parts where you see they're in the mess hall eating and there's fucking little rodents trying not to be stepped on because you know they're big ass creatures and they're like oh I almost killed you with one step but the show does a really interesting thing where they make it almost like I don't know if it's racism as a, a per se but they use them as two different type of cultures that are in the same area and like you know the carnivores are kind of just trying to live there while the herbivores kind of hate them because they're always scared constantly about you know being devoured which you know the show kind of touches on it a lot definitely in season two when you know spoilers i'll talk about it later but i think it's really interesting that they use it to show world real world issues by not just blatantly shoving it in your face it's a great way to show people the problems without is yes, without being too like slap you in the face with it it's interesting how they act because you know as I said that they're scared of each other well I guess the carnivores are scared of them but the or the herbivores are scared of the carnivores but the carnivores still kind of want to be friends and you know they just kind of want to live a normal life but some of them are like ah, I think we should be separated it makes sense I'd be scared to death if I was a herbivore and you know my best friend was a goddamn wolf or a bear you know a tiger things that will kill you in like one bite <laughs> Okay, 
I'm going to start it off right here. There's one thing really awkward about this show. So there's a, <laughs> a love triangle, which is fine, you know, drama, romance. It's good. It's, you know, it's needed in a school anime like this. But the issue is, <laughs> it is really awkward. So you got Legacy, Haru, 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 there you go. And Louie, there you go, that's his name. Uh, so Louie and Legacy likes Haru. But she's a bunny, and your main character is a wolf and a deer. The deer is fine, you know, I don't mind the inner species things, you know, but the herbivore carnivore thing is really awkward. Definitely in season one, when they do, when he's talking to her, but he doesn't know how to talk talk to her, and she thinks, oh, you, you know, she's like a whore of a bunny. <laughs> so she's like, oh, he just wants to fuck. And they start, she starts stripping. That scene <laughs> is so weird. I had to show the guys. They're like, what the fuck? That probably really definitely drew them away from the show. But it's really awkward to see it because you have the weird... This is, I think, the one part where I noticed the CG be really awkward was when that was happening. And I'm just like, I don't... I don't like this. I'm no judging. <laughs> but definitely in season two is also really weird is when you... I don't even know her name. The deer that is a stripper in the carnivore place so she's surrounded by cages and, you know they throw money at her and they're like ah oh, her looks and i could eat her you know it's like a, a two-part thing man those scenes are just really awkward it's like i hope no one's watching while i'm watching <laughs> no one's over my shoulder well that's like the only awkward thing that i can think from the show and it doesn't happen much i feel like a lot of those things also kind of disappear because definitely the the stripper one i don't feel like you see her much in season two she kind of just disappears but you know it's just really weird to to think that it's like oh she was a character really important and she's not there i don't think she died so maybe in season three if there is gonna be a season three but uh that's another weird thing about this show. They added also the in season two they added the uh, rattlesnake and she doesn't really come up much. She's like, "Oh, you go find this, and uh, I, I I can tell you uh, kind of the way," and then she disappeared. And you're like, "Where'd she go?" It's like, yeah, whatever. I kind of talked about is on the same bullet point is the, re the relationship between all the characters of the mixed herb and carnivores. It. It's constantly an issue for some of the guys. Uh, he has obviously the romantic taboos that are in the show. He said herbivores, carnivores, blah, blah, blah. But it'll definitely be interesting to see what they do in season three with it. Because I feel like season two, they kind of skipped a lot of it. They showed a lot more story between his training arc and other characters. So we'll just skip that one. Uh... <laughs> The usual best best segment uh best boy is definitely panda boy go go in go on whatever he's a great character he, he's where the training art first begins which i didn't expect this show to have i thought it'd be more like drama slash romance maybe detective with what happened in the beginning of season or at the end of the season one metal somewhere in there with uh, the one guy getting devoured but where he comes into play, he's part of the black market, kind of, but he's trying to rehabilitate all the carnivores that are eating meat, and they're trying to, like, they're starting to actually just start eat other carnivores, which is not good. So he tries, he beats the shit out of them, and then rehabilitates them with medicine and stuff. And he starts to train Legacy in Season 2, because he meets him in 1. Uh, he's just a great character. Best boy. Uh, I'd also say the his best friend, the Golden Retriever, is also a pretty good character. You don't see him too much, but he is just really, really a good bro. Uh, best girl, in my opinion, is uh, Juno, or the wolf girl. Uh, she's pretty damn wholesome. Uh, when she was first introduced, I'm like, ah, she'll fit perfectly with the wolf, but or like she, but he just doesn't like her for some weird reason. And she just keeps chasing him. I feel bad for her, but she's a super strong character. Season two, you see tons more of her. How she gets, 
you can kind of see that she didn't want to be with the herbivores, but now she's like really good friends with one of them and she's understanding both sides. Uh, I love her growth. I think she's probably one of the best characters in the show. Now, I'm going to go... I don't have any worst boys that I can think of. Maybe the, the fucking Ram in season two. Fuck that guy. But, you know, he's just an asshole of a character. Same as uh, Leo or, or yeah, whatever. The fucking deer in season one. He start, They both have the same attitude in the beginning. But at least one of them changes. <laughs> but worst girl is definitely Bunny Haru. I know I'm going to get a shit ton of flack for this, probably. If anyone watches it. But she's just so manipulative. I don't even think she is, but she's such a slutty character. She's dragging her on the wolf while she's fucking Louie. And it's like, she's just fucking everyone, technically. And I don't know how all of these guys are like, yeah, she best girl. I, you know, I want to be with the slutty white bunny. You're just like, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. It's like, she's a bitch. Ugh. Go for, yeah, they said go for the fucking wolf. Best character. She's nominated for Beast Star. So is Louie and so is Legacy probably after season two. But it's just amazing <laughs> that people are like, yeah, it's a good relationship. It's not a good relationship. Fuck you people. Definitely on that Netflix thing I watched with uh, Connor, C-Dog, VA, and I think Giga, or Joey was on there. I think it was Joey. Fuck that one. <laughs> How was that like? I think it was number two. People have bad taste. So for a show that's CG, the fight scenes are really well animated. Uh, the scenes are not like just like a thousand cuts. They're pretty fluid. There is some cutting, obviously, and there's not. It's not like super just like constant beating up people because technically, you know, in a real fight, you're not beating up like thirty thousand people constantly. Uh, but I know in season two, you, you do get the really meaty fights with definitely when he doesn't use his fangs and he just starts to kick the shit out of like the, the hyenas or whatever they were. And it's just really interesting to see how that turns, like the fight scenes are just, they're just good. <laughs> I'm trying to think in season one if they're, oh, season one, uh... I don't want to get too far into it, but the with the deer or Leo and Legacy going after the save Haru, those scenes are actually really well animated too. I'll spoil it more in a couple minutes, but uh, yeah, good fight scenes. Okay, so I talked about it a few seconds ago, but I'm gonna go back to the training arc because I have a, you know these bullet points in this order. Um, the training arc's really good. I didn't expect it. But when he's strengthening his body by not eating meat, like he's stuck in the room with it, and he's like meditating. And then just like the panda kind of motivating him not to do it. And then towards the end where he's just, he's training so hard that his muscles are getting stronger, but his jaw is getting weaker. Because you find that out when he uh, wrestles the tiger and like instantly gets destroyed. He's like, I thought I was getting stronger, but I'm weak as fuck. You're like, no, you are strong. <laughs> You're just a different type of strong. You know, the more of the hands and less of the teeth. Now he's doing this training arcs for the end fight, which I'll talk about in a few. That, you know, he's trying to get ready for the big fight. So he's like, I'm going to destroy this guy. But I can't be <laughs> a guy that's like five times my weight in size. So he's like, this is how I'll do it. I'm pretty sure I'll kick his ass. Uh, but this is the part where you see, I said, the great animation comes in where he's fighting, like, the hyenas and stuff. And he's learning that he gets bit multiple times. And they can't, like, they're like, oh, I can't bite in you. you. Your tendons are super strong. That's because he was turning more into a herbivore, like how your body structure is set, which I don't understand how that thing works. Not up my alley. But I think it's a really good idea, like, how they did it. Anyway, so I was talking about that the herbivores are... His body's turned more into a herbivore, which I think's really interesting. I don't know why they did it like that. I don't know. I doubt that's how real life works. But I do think that's a good way of what they did. Season 3 will probably be really interesting to see. Since he did do something towards the end, I will... 
spoil the shit out of this at the end that I want to talk about. But, uh, anyway, so besides that, they also make the characters you hate really likable, if that makes sense. So, like, in season one, you have Louie. He's kind of, like, the popular kid. Really good actor. He's hot, I guess. And everyone wants to be around him. But he's kind of pompous, and you're like, fuck that guy. But the way he just acts, you're just like, fuck him. But then he has such remarkable, like, turnover. Because in season two, he starts to become really likable. Where he's, like, helping out. He helped out Legacy when he needed it. He was, he decided that he's like, ah, my life is kind of useless without, you know. I might as well just die now, and he doesn't. And he just ends up helping a lot of <laughs> weird carnivore people because he helps out tires. I said uh, Louis or uh, Legacy, a uh, big help to him. Uh, but you also learn why he is like who he is find out his father is kind of like his father bought him from the black market to become the next V star and so he has all this pressure his dad doesn't really love him doesn't really care about anything so he's just like I'm just doing this to appease him and in season two he just ends up being like fuck that I'm gonna be me whatever happens happens either way I'm gonna be super important helpful he, re he really changes sides where at first i was at least i was i was like fuck this guy he's just the worst character in the show and i hope he dies kind of but you know he, he makes up for it and then second season uh the brown bear you're like oh, i like this guy he did something pretty fucked up but he had like a great reason why he did it and, you know, I'll get more in that in a second. And then the Ram is just... I don't understand the Ram in Season 2. He kind of just pushes everyone's buttons constantly. And he's like, I'm going to die. Oh, wow. I don't want to die. Fuck this. And then he just goes ape shit. And it's like, what? <laughs> but they do really figure out how to make all your characters you would hate. Even the tiger. Like, he's just the jock dude. And at a certain point, you're like, ah, this guy's just being an asshole. But, you know, he's super buff. That's why he wants to fight everyone. But, yeah, show turns around. Everyone becomes fucking cool, <laughs> weirdly to say. So this show makes you feel the pressure of living in that society and how hard it would be to be on both sides of the line, like being a herbivore or the carnivore. Where if you're a herbivore, you're scared to death that you're going to die. And carnivores, you're just... You're shunned because you normally eat meat, but most of the time they're eating like sedatives or some type of replacement or just even vegetables, which God must be weird as fuck for them. But then they have the instinct every time they smell meat, they're like, I gotta go eat it. You know, it's, it's crazy to feel like how they would have to suppress themselves from like injuring other people or hurting things. But definitely in like season two, when. Juno, the wolf girl, uh, is said before she really hated people, or I guess she didn't hate them, but like mentality, she didn't like the herbivores as much. But then, like, she didn't want to take pictures with them, or, like selfies. But and then in season two, she started hanging out with, I'm pretty sure it was one of the rams, or I guess it would be a sheep. Uh, she got really close to one of them, and she's like, okay, let's take it. Like, she offered to take the selfie, and you know, you learn that all the people that are herbivores that take pictures of carnivores get more likes than just being a carnivore or just being the herbivore. It's very interesting to see that dynamic played out. And definitely when you see, like, the carnivores, they have the power struggle of who's the strongest and the herbivores kind of just scurry away, but they're trying not to hurt them. But, you know, sometimes it does happen, like... <laughs> Like, in season two, uh, not a big spoiler, but one of the, I think he's like a jaguar, bites off an arm of, like, a mole rat or something. 
and he feels super bad and he, like they go put it back together and they become good friends about it it's it's really interesting to see people live like that <laughs> so in season two i do like how the carnivores because i don't think in season one they do too much but i know in season two they know he kind of slept with her that legacy and haru slept in the same place and they're like they're giving shit about it like I don't know how you can like, you know, a girl like her, super small, and like, how do you do it? She's like, this big, and you're like, this big. Tell us how it works. He's like, fuck off. We didn't do shit. Go away. <laughs> like, yeah, you did. Oh, man. I thought that, that scene was just super funny. I just had to bring it up. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like real life. We always give each other shit about it. Uh, so I'm going to start spoiling here. Uh, definitely season one. So at the end of season one, you have the big fight with the tigers and the boss, where Louis, Louis we thought was killed because he runs in after Legacy, uh, saves Haru, and Louis basically says, "Get out of here." They leave, and Louis gets the gun and he kills the main boss, and then he's just like, "Well, my life's over." All the tigers come in, and you're like, "Ah, oh, he got devoured." Oh well, it's like. You know, he died, he died super cool. And then you find out in season two, right at the beginning, that Louis is still alive, and he is now the boss of all the Tigers. And you're like, what the fuck? How'd that happen? So basically, how they do it is they're like, uh, we're going to have to merge with someone. We don't want to merge. So we'll just we'll be really out of the ballpark and use him as our leader. And since he's their leader, everyone's kind of like, confused but they're like okay we'll make you the leader if you can eat this buffalo meat and you know fucking i can't imagine a carnivore eating meat i've seen it before but you're just like damn that's fucking crazy and then he you know he takes a bite swallows it and he's like okay i've had enough and he goes out and throws up but <laughs> but it's really interesting because he, he eats a lot of stuff a lot of meat with them just to be just to show him that he's still strong enough to be with tigers, even though he's a fucking herbivore fucking deer or elk or whatever the fuck he is, that he can stand up to everyone, even though he's not fucking a carnivore. Oh, look, quick, quick uh, tidbit about Legacy. Didn't like him in the white fur. I know he looked younger. I liked him in the gray fur. He looks more tough, stronger. He looks so <laughs> weak with the white fur. But, you know, it was cool dynamic how they did it to make him kind of reborn. You know, I, I just like that. Just want to talk about it. Uh, oh, going back to season two with the rattlesnake. It's weird that they added so many characters. So you had the rattlesnake, the deer. And then you had that one scene where, I don't know if they were the principal or the president of the, the school. But they're like, oh, we need a beast star. It's been so long. And if you can't find them, we're going to nominate someone. Whoever finds the uh, main bad guy, whoever devoured the first person, if they can find out who it is, they will be next B-Star. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And that whole thing, all those characters just disappear. So I'm not sure if it's a big arc in Season 3. I don't know why they even bothered putting it in Season 2 without it having a little bit of stuff at the end of Season 2. I didn't like that they threw it in and then just let it disappear. It really got me thinking. I'm like, so are they not going to talk about it? Whatever. And then, oh, yeah, and then later she drops out at the end of the fucking season two. I'm pretty sure. Can't remember. And so it'll be interesting to see what they do for the next season. Hopefully they'll explain it. So we do find out who the true killer is by the end middle of season two we find out it's the bear big surprise because he's like lovable he, he just he just eats honey he's taking like these pills that are makes him weaker and stuff but he becomes friends with the guy he ate and he's like oh never had a friend like this so i don't have to take my pills anymore and since he learned that he the other guy gets scared and he ends up devouring him so really, like, it's really cool how they do it because they just make it seem like he's basically just mentally insane. Where he's like, I did it because, you know, close friends should be <laughs> in each other, I think is what he said. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> you're, 
you're just weird. But I do like how they did it in that show where they they make you seem like oh he wasn't just a crazy maniac or he wasn't just hungry. He did it for a cause. And you kinda of find out later on, he didn't really do it for a cause. <laughs> he thought he did, but he was just hungry and wanted to get stronger. Or not stronger, just wanted to eat meat. It's really cool how they did it. But, you know, that's just one really interesting. Uh, so last fight scene, this is where the, the part where Legacy, he gets all this training done and he's like, oh, I'm going to kick the shit out of this bear. And it's a pretty, I won't say even, it's not one sided either, but the bear is pretty goddamn strong. Fucking throws him around. He can't bite into him either because his meat's too tender, strong, whatever. And it's really a cool dynamic. He's like, oh, I'm going to fight you just from eating <laughs> vegetables and using all this strength training. But at the end, the bear pretty much almost kills him. And he's just, he's resting there. He's like, oh, tell me. And this is where he explains the reason why he ate him. He said, just because he's basically mentally insane. And that's when Louie comes in and fucking saves his ass. And they go away and he's like, we should call the cops. And he's like, <laughs> Or Louis like, we should call the cops. He's like, no, I'm going to finish this fight, Legacy says. So he's like, the only way I could... And then Louis offers up, I think it's a leg. Yeah, the leg where he has the number written on. He's like, if I don't get rid of this number, you know, it's been holding me back. So he ends up... And Legacy's like, I don't want to eat it. But he ends up eating it. He gets super fucking strong. Beats the shit out of the bear. And I think the cops come just before they both... Or either of them dies. And, uh, yeah, it's basically the end of season two is they both get arrested. The bear goes to jail for, I don't know, forever. And then Legashi is just, like, probated or paroled for also devouring the leg. But it was kind of the reason why. So it's really interesting to see how they did that. And it'll be interesting to see if he uses meat now to train with the vegetables. Or if he's just going to go back <laughs> to normal. I don't even know what season three is going to be about there. The only arc is now he might be a beast star, but is he going to fight again? If he is, who is he going to fight and why? But it'll be interesting to see what happens in this next next season. Uh, I got two more bullet points, guys. Uh, the saddest part to me is when the lion actually dies at the end. So Louie is part of, you know, part of this mob, or Yakuza. And he ends up... I'm trying to think of how to put it. He ends up saying, I'm leaving because I want to help Legacy. It's really funny because you see, like, Legacy finally meets him. He he disguises himself as, um, like, a druggie. And then he disguises himself as, <laughs> as a female wolf that looks ugly as shit. Even the main lion was like, what the fuck is this guy? So at the end, he's, Legacy's like, I'm going to be fighting this. It would be cool if you were there. So Louie's like, I got to go help him. And the, the, I guess his first man was like, okay, but that means, he's like, I'm leaving the thing. So that means I got to, either I devour you now or you kill me. And he gives him a gun to shoot him. And Louie doesn't want to kill him because, you know, they've been such good together. And just before he bites him, one of the mob friends shoots the lion to save him because... The lion's like, if I ever try to devour him, shoot me. So I guess he's just been following him around just in case. And it's pretty pretty sad because, you know, he kills him. And then Louie's like, oh, why? Or I don't even know the other wolf or other tiger was like, why was he going to devour? He's like, I'm leaving. He's like, just get out of here. And if you ever come back, we'll kill you. And I'm like, damn, that's fucking spicy. But it makes me super sad because he's just, he was just there the whole time. Like he was trying to give him fucking uh, vegetables and say eating meat because he was starting to get skinnier and probably would die from starvation because I don't think herbivores can just eat meat. <laughs> I don't think that's part of your diet. But, you know, carnivores have been eating fucking vegetables, so I guess it's a thing. But uh, to me, that's probably like the saddest part of the goddamn show. I was like, dude, he was such a bro. And I do wonder what they're going to do. I think he'll probably take over. The guy who killed everyone. But, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if we do see those guys come back. If not, you know, long live the Tiger King. <laughs> uh, uh, 
thing and I said the only the thing that finishes my bullet points is I don't think they'll ever fin finish the thing where they said no one will the, oh, the guy who got caught whoever caught the bad guy will be the next beast deck I don't even know what that means like I know they explained it it means like you're like super high up you're gonna be the next like star of the world basically and I'll be interesting to see what they do with it. I might raid the manga if they don't have a season three. And I'm not going to look it up right now, but but I'm pretty sure that there will be a season three. It's pretty goddamn popular. But, yeah, it's, that's my bullet point reviews, guys. So I really like this show. Uh, there's a lot of drama. The action's pretty good. I never thought it would go there. But between season one and season two, I think I put season one at an eight. And I think in my mind, I think season two is like an 8.5. So it probably rounds out to an 8, 8.25, somewhere in there. I do think this show is just really good. It's a must watch. I recommend it in English. That's how I watched it. And I think the voice acting is just really good. I think this is, I'll just restate everything I just, just said. Voice acting is good. Animation's actually really good for CG. Uh, the characters are pretty lovable. And even the ones you don't see much and uh interact with every time you do see him you're like oh that's pretty cool he's still here he's still a important character and uh it'll be interesting to see what they do like i said with the b stars uh if they're gonna be like a big nominee pool if he's even gonna be like a thing if they're just gonna give it to louis because he may be found out i don't know he might they might want to put him as the the leader for the b star so they have the fox who was nominated, or the, yeah, not the fox, the wolf, her, uh, not her, the female one, Juno. Or like she who actually figured it out. It'd be interesting to see what they do with that. It'd be interesting to see what we're at the end. We saw the tiger and the sheep, I guess it was. I can't remember. Uh, they were holding hands, so you could see that they were getting closer. And that they actually want to segregate the herbivores and carnivores because they're like this is the only other school around here that they're together it'll be interesting to see if there's flack for it i think season three will be probably just pretty much pure drama and pure, pure drama and romance and then it seems like uh haru and legacy are like a, a thing thing now the legacy kind of just wants to disappear because she still thinks of Lee, of, yeah, Louie. But I don't know what's going to happen. I said, I'd recommend season one, season two. Season three is probably on its way. If not, finish it with the manga. I don't think it's super long. It's one of those, I'm pretty sure that's finished right now. But uh, give it a check. Anyway, so I'm, I'm Forrest. I'll have everyone's names down here anyway. And then check out my Etsy page. Uh, we have some art and stuff in there for stickers. And it just helps us support the channel. Basically, all the money that goes into it goes into the podcast and more sticker stuff. So, anyway, uh, check us out. We have podcasts every Tuesday at 2 a.m. in the morning in my time. So, whenever that is your time. But we're on uh, YouTube, Spotify, a Apple, Amazon, Google. Or it's not Amazon, Google. Anything like that. Check it out. Be cool if you can give this a like, share it, subscribe would be really nice. But yeah, have a go.